Fifth grade innovators. We're ready to create. When I first started, I was like, how am I going to do this? <laughs> when I see the code on the screen, and it's so complicated looking, you're already kind of turned off by it. You look at it, you think, oh my, I don't even know how to begin learning and understanding that language. Bringing in computational thinking and bringing in computer science, at first it didn't seem like it would work, but as soon as I got my hands dirty, it was a natural fit. My name is Damian Kingsbury. I'm a fifth grade teacher here at Dorothy J. Vaughan Academy of Technology. Even though you might feel like what you're doing is not working, it actually is. I've learned that once I give them an assessment based on a science lesson, based on what we did in coding, I see the numbers jump up. My name's Eric Anderson. I am the math teacher here at KM Perform, so we're an arts public charter school in Wisconsin, but we teach with an interdisciplinary model. Regardless of what your content is, computer science and the use of technology is, it may not be the actual center of your content, but it is helping your content move forward. If you're a visual artist, you have to know your technology to the drama students. Lo and behold, there's a lot of physics and lighting a stage. My name is Tracy Kim, and I teach third grade at Robert C. Fissler. It's okay if it doesn't tie into curriculum completely from the beginning. Give it a chance, and then it'll start to tie, and you'll come up with the ideas. They came up with an animal that they wanted to, you know, maneuver through its biome, and then they made a little costume for it, and then we're going to green screen the maze, and then we wanted to make like a National Geographic documentary of that animal. Okay, we gotta check out your code, huh? It wants to dance. <laughs> you don't get to do it in one try. You don't code it once and then it's right. It's over and over and you gotta keep making changes again and again and it really teaches, hey guys, we can't give up. And then when you actually get to that finish line and you get it to do what you wanted it to do, it's such a exhilarating feeling. And I feel like that perfectly teaches growth mindset. You fail forward. Every programmer I've ever met, they know that, they innately understand that. And I think most teachers innately understand that, but they have a hard time connecting that. I started small, so I would learn little bits. And then whatever I would learn, I would teach it to my kids instantly, as soon as I learned it. Otherwise, I'd forget it. Learn a little, teach a little. Learn a little, teach a little. Even if there's something I don't know how to do, if someone else figures it out, they announce it out. You know, we're learning it together. You have to give up the mantle of being the expert in class. Even folks who are computer science teachers formally, I would guess they would echo the same sentiment. They can't be the master of everything that's happening because everything that's happening is moving way too fast for any single person to know it all. As teachers, we're all worried that we don't know enough, but if we kind of dip our toes into the water together, we can get this computer science off the ground and help it to be truly embedded into all the curriculum, not just a coding time or a special coding class, but part of our natural everyday curriculum. In no workplace do you only do math and maybe not aspects of business or science or what, like it's all together in every workplace in your life that all of these things are combined. And I think computer science might be the gel that brings it all together. You can connect this with science and math or you can connect this with reading, yeah, it's possible. So anybody that's really thinking about jumping into the computer science or coding world, jump into it. <laughs> jump right into it.